Ask Reddit by Hurricane Herschel. Parents who tried their best to raise their kids to be good humans but they turned out to be jerks. What do you wish you did differently? I'm speaking as a teacher, but I've seen wildly different siblings. I think parents need to get a handle on that dynamic. A lot of perfectionist older siblings and younger ones who can't achieve at that level and act out instead to find how they can earn attention. Yep. People need to stop treating kids as carbon copies of their older siblings. And I say this as an eldest child who differs greatly in personality and interests from my younger sibling. It's not fair to anyone, least of all the kid who has to deal with being measured by someone else's standard. Everyone is their own person even the twins I've known had different personalities and interests if one cared to observe. Be very careful who you have kids with. If I could do it all over again, I would have chosen better. They ended up with one responsible parent who was completely overwhelmed trying to do the job of two people. My parents. My mom was hyper involved while my dad immediately detached the minute we stopped being cute and started having opinions. I see him doing it to his grandkids now. Mom put us in every event sport extracurricular, dad never attended and often had no idea what we did with our time. Mom pushed us to excel academically and we often were doing super high level classes, dad assumed we were lazy because we were often tired and didn't have jobs. Hard when you have a double class load as a high school freshman. Dad was also pretty verbally abusive, to me, at least. Mom knew we had a negative relationship but never pried and never got involved. She didn't doesn't know how far it went, to be fair. Which also sucked. I think my mom would have been an awesome parent if she had an equal partner but instead we had an absentee and someone to involved in being everything to actually listen to what was going on. The mom of one of the Columbine shooters gave a TED talk about this. She wrote a book called A Mother's Reckoning about all the signs she missed. I think every parent needs to read this book before their kids hit their teenage years. I wish I knew that some grandparents shouldn't be allowed to have a relationship with a vulnerable, easily manipulated child. I wish I knew it was okay to cut people out of your life. My wife died when my son was 3 months old, last time my in-laws saw him was at her funeral. I moved, changed numbers and just dropped off the map as far as they knew. Saw how their kids turned out, they weren't getting near mine. Generally speaking. If you try to teach your kids something and not be the example, you might as well not have wasted your time. The best field anthropologist in the world is a kid watching the grown-ups. Not me, but my parents have discussed what they wished they had done differently for my brother in order to prevent him from becoming a violent, homeless, drug-addicted snotball of a person. They wish they had sent him to therapy before problems ever started, and that they had reacted quicker and sent him sooner when they did. They wish they hadn't yelled so much at all of us. That they had been more patient and forgiving of our mistakes. They wish a lot. My brother's sister-in-law knew there was something off with her son when he was around 2-3. All of the doctors and grandparents were just like he needs more discipline, etc. That wasn't it, she stuck with it. Turns out he's a sociopath. Luckily it was caught early enough and they could afford all of the psychiatrist, psychologist, group therapy etc that he's learned how he's supposed to act in the world last i talked to them he was completely off medication and thriving in school had to be homeschooled till around 9-10 edit to everyone questioning his diagnosis that's the therapy he went through there's a documentary about it out there i'm sure you can all find with no difficulty don't praise kids for being smart even if they are if you do this the first time they find something academically challenging, they might think they are not smart anymore, or that you lied and they were never smart in the first place. Praise them for their willingness to try, to problem solve, and to persevere. My kid isn't a jerk, but he is an underachiever who lacks confidence. I put too much emphasis on his intelligence and not enough on hard work. Lots of great answers here. The idea of tried their best is so subjective. Every circumstance is so different. 
you get the full spectrum of what trying is defined as. Some parents say how hard they work and how good of a parent they were, but then you find out they were abusive thinking that it was good parenting. Or vice versa. Parents who say they failed and their kids are all good kids. Bottom line, with so many factors and external variables, it's hard to know what the true formula is. My only advice is to try and be a good human and your kids will most likely follow suit. A lot. I wish I'd insisted on eating dinner as a family every day. I wish I'd found more things to do with them that we each enjoyed. I wish I'd taken them backpacking more often at an earlier age to expose them to nature, unplug them from the world, and teach them how good it feels to tackle a big challenge with no external help. I wish I'd been more patient and playful. Oh man, all of these. A big regret was not spending more time in nature with my kid, something that was very influential on a young me. My son is a pretty great adult so I can't focus too much on my own guilt, though. Currently pregnant and acutely scanning this thread to take note of what not to do. Check out the book How to Raise Kids Who Aren't Assholes. I deeply regret not reading to them more. I have cried as an adult thinking about this dumb, stupid mistake when I think about how neither of them read books and the ways reading might have sparked character growth. In my experience most jerk kids come from jerk parents. That being said, kids can easily become jerks when they have no consequences for their actions. Not just as a toddler but throughout childhood. This is true. But I noticed when my kids were in elementary school that so many of them had the nicest parents, and yet their kids were utter brats. I did find out later, a lot of the parents were in fact, jerks. Just knew the societal norms to which they were supposed to conform. If wishes were fishes we'd all cast a net. My dad always said that to me. I would have educated myself. I would have entered therapy to understand my childhood traumas to avoid, very broad here. Basically would have prepared myself better to be the best adult mom for them. Gained mental tools. I would have stood up for myself more in order to protect them from consequences of me not standing up for us. I would have been kinder in his breakdowns. It's tough man. Had to stop myself there. Every kid is different. I have four. Each one has to be praised, encouraged, disciplined, and motivated differently to suit their natural personality. Parenting advice whether from a friend or from some guru who has written many books, should be looked at as suggestions of things to try and see how your child responds to it. Similarly, what you liked or disliked about your parents growing up might not be the same as what your child likes or dislikes. Edit. Since I've gotten a few likes on this, I'm not an expert either. So also take my advice with a grain of salt. Speaking as a teacher, the two most important things anyone can do to help a child is Relationship building. Yes, you need to build a healthy relationship with the child. This ties into the second thing. Stability. You need to establish consistency for the child. A child needs to know that this relationship you're cultivating with them as parent-child or teacher-student, is reliable and safe, hence stable. If you do these two things will your child evolve into Jesus Christ? No. But think about it like this, would you rather build a skyscraper on land or on the sea? Children have less barriers to learning good behaviors if they have a stable and consistent environment of good examples to learn from and practice. They can also only do that if they trust you, and to do that, you need to build a healthy relationship, and be the example for them to learn from. Don't be overly strict. Love, 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 and love some more. Love doesn't mean no consequences or discipline but actually the opposite. Let them learn from relatively safe natural consequences. And then. Love them unconditionally and be there for them when the natural consequences happen. Then let go and realize they are ultimately on their own journey. There's a difference between being nice and being a pushover. 
Nice people raise nice kids. Push over raise spoiled kids. I've always believed that there is a difference between kindness and niceness. I do my best to model kind assertive boundaries and healthy communication with my daughter. Did anyone's perspective just completely change after having kids? All I can think now is that was someone's baby. I see a homeless man on the street and I think of my son, that man was someone's baby boy. I see someone on the news that did something terrible and I think that was someone's baby boy too. Being rocked to sleep and fed a bottle, that was someone's baby. Being a parent is so scary, you hope you do the right thing and raise a good kid but people can have mental illness, struggle with addiction, and commit crimes even if they have a good mom and dad. Sure the statistics are lower but it happens. I hope no mother ever looks at my boy and thinks I can't believe that was someone's baby once. Everyone should read about attachment theory. Most of your life's relationships are heavily dependent on how you were patented in the early years of your life. Be more supportive and loving with your kids. Just had a conversation on here yesterday with somebody where we concluded that your romantic relationships and treatment of partners is almost entirely related to how your parents treated you and each other, and how your first relationship goes. You're totally on the money. There's nothing I wished for more than for my parents to support the things I actually was interested in. They not only largely didn't, but my mom cried when I told her I wanted to make video games when I grew up. I'd been making maps for the Marathon series, an old FPS series by a tiny little studio called Bungie, who went on to make Halo and whatnot if you aren't familiar. They refused to believe that video games were a viable industry, and I ended up in marketing somehow, caring 0% about my work beyond it paying bills. Not my kid, but a kid I grew up with. His parents were super strict and this kid was one of the most religious people I've ever met. He was in church pretty much any time the church was open. Was a great guy and a really good person, but very odd because of his parents. He was the one always getting made fun of, etc. I found out recently that he was arrested a few months ago on child porn charges, which absolutely blows my mind. I never would have thought that coming from him. I dunno, but maybe if his parents hadn't been so strict and controlling, he would have turned out differently and been a little more well adjusted socially. Edit, just for all the people assuming he was abused at church, it's very unlikely, although not impossible. I also grew up going to that church before my parents got divorced when I was a teenager and I stopped going altogether, though I never went as frequently as he did. There wasn't any abuse going on that I was aware of and the pastor was a great guy who I still respect to this day despite no longer believing in church much. Like I said, I can't say 100% for certain, but I seriously doubt anything like that happened to him there. When I was a kid the other kids that were the sons and daughters of clergy were always the worst. I wish I had applied more limits. Growing up with a helicopter Monday, I tried to be different and ended up giving my daughter too much freedom. It hurted her a lot. My parents tried hard but I was an awful child I'm a parent now and really wish my parents would have just watched less screens and connected with me more one of the things I love to do w my kids is have a nightly convo while we're all laying in bed with the lights off ready for bed. Classic not a parent but thing here but, as someone whose sister was a complete bitch that was always given the benefit of the doubt even when she was clearly wrong, this is because my parents wanted to be fair to her, resulting in them being unfair to me, I just wish they went a little harder on her. Whenever she did something, they'd just tell her not to do it, and she'd do it again the very next day, while if I did something similar, and then the next day did it again, I'd get screamed at for half an hour. Because of this, she just got away with anything. And whenever I told my parents that she keeps doing it because they were going too easy on her, they'd just get mad at me. Sounds zerily similar to my little brother. He could do no wrong growing up. My favorite example was he shot me in the eye with a Nerf gun, and me being a 10 year old child, I cried because it hurt. My little brother then got upset because I was crying, so I got in trouble for making him cry. I could write a damn novel on the inequities between us. 
it would truly blow your mind and I'm the good one that my parents never had to worry about. Interesting mix in the comments of parents who wish they were less strict and let things slide, and those who wish they'd been firmer and not coddled them. Parenting is a tightrope. There was a talk by a lead child psychologist and he talks about how out-of-home influences have a significantly higher impact than parental influences after they start to get older. Let me find the TM media equals web. Sorry on mobile and can't shorten it. I'm not a parent but my parents made sure my brother became a sex offender by ignoring and excusing his lifetime of sociopathic behavior and ensure that he will never change by now continuing to enable and coddle him even now that he's been convicted and gone to jail. It sounds like this character building stuff is optional but I can assure you, helping a human being avoid all consequences for their behavior means that they will become monsters. I must admit I yell at mine a bit. Frustrated more than anything. Early teens can be painful. This thread has opened my eyes. I will be more patient with them and when I go to yell I'll. Remember what y'all said here. Thanks everyone. Wish me luck. I wish we hadn't settled during the custody case and instead fought for full custody of my stepson with limited supervised visitation with his mom. We thought we were doing the right thing and she ruined him. Never ever get a child as a child. You'd be surprised how much genetics plays even in temperament and behavior of offspring. If you start from a position of I didn't cause this behavior you'll react in a less defensive way when dealing with kids because your ego will be in check. At this point you can find productive ways to equip a child for their personality instead of taking their behavior personally and using strategies that worked for you 100% of the things I regret when raising mine are when I took part in self-loathing of their behavior and made child raising about me. Kids are not clones of you and you don't control them. I work in a low income area in Chicago and although I don't have kids myself, I teach kindergarten, 5-6 year olds, and let me tell you, I've seen some things. In my opinion, the absolute most important thing you can teach a child is how to regulate their emotions. As adults, to teach that lesson we ourselves have to have the tools and know how to teach someone to emotionally regulate. This is a lesson that is so looked over and it is impossible for a child to learn emotional regulation if the adults around them are not adjusted in this way. I'm not saying it's not common for children to be dysregulated because I spend my day putting out emotional fires. But children throw tantrums, hurt themselves or each other, and act out because they literally have not been taught how to handle hard emotions. Children that learn to work through and healthily navigate their emotions will become well-adjusted adults in most cases. And this includes children who have been through trauma like many of my students. <laughs>